was afflicted to use the Oslo Accord, the Vatican, the World Council of Churches, and the primary mover of this is the United Nations. For example, that uh, Muslim cleric that tried to build a mosque in New York City is part of this round table of uh, religions, of all religions on the earth, that were trying to build some kind of dialogue to create world peace. And, well, yes, and on the outside, that's a positive move. Right, it's on the, but, but what they're doing is they're actually trying to create a dialectic of conflict so they can use it as a means to control the population through conflict. Yes. Okay. So it has the appearance of looking good. They say, well, that looks like a good thing because we were normal, reasonable people, but there's a portion that they want to radicalize. For example, Islam, they don't like the fact that only maybe 1% or 2% of Islamics are radical. They want to make 5 or 10% radicals, and they have a better motive to attack those countries and take over the resources. And, you know, the military industrial intelligence complex can crush our population while they direct more and more money to the military industrial complex and the corporations get richer. Right, but that, that trend has been going on for quite some time. Um, yeah, I we want to amplify it up, but now we're at the wall. We're at the wall where they can't do that anymore, and there's white hats everywhere, including billionaires, trillionaires, and military, not just in America, that have reached the limit of how far we can go with okay. this. Okay, let me ask you another question. Uh, ben Fulford and a couple other people are talking about the idea that there are there's a lot of fighting going on behind the scenes in the ranks of the Illuminati. Exactly, uh, that's what I've heard too. Okay, that, and you that, agree that, with that? that very wealthy people are, I got a lot of fans, because I'm, I'm very positive like that, okay? I really think, you know, so are you, you know, and, and uh, Carrie, that we think of, okay, these are things going on, but it's all not all one way, all negative, oh my gosh, it's the end of the world, it's not. Right. It's, uh, here's the reality, we have these options, we can do something about this, we can walk into a bright future where we extend human lifespan, we travel to the stars, we communicate with advanced civilizations, we transfer technology, start what I call galactic trade, we have a civilization there where no one is deprived of energy, education, food, shelter, and, and, and has rights from the moment that they're conceived, and they have rights against being hit with depleted uranium or pollution or any of these electro pollution or whatever. Uh, I think it's all doable, doable. It's a matter of do we have the will to become that more spiritual kind of galactic mankind that can do that interaction, that can set aside war, and as it says in the symbol in front of the United Nations, we will, you know, hammer our weapons of warfare into plowshares. Exactly. Now, and, I, what I want to know is from your sources, are you getting people coming to you who are telling you about defection of, of, of people from the side of the Illuminati onto the White Hat side, yes. some whom are, are also being de denied. I mean, I don't know if this is just rumor, uh, innuendo, whether there actually are individuals trying to, uh, who have been major players in the Illuminati who are now looking for shelter in, in countries and being turned away. I mean, I think that sounds very uh, lovely, but I think it's actually very over dramatic and that it might be also... Um, well, I think it's a little bit more subtle than that, like trying to escape. I think it's like uh, if you were during the days of Nazi Germany and you're inside, let's say, the, the, uh, the upper echelons of the SS and the German government, you'd have probably a cabal with them that knew that Germany was going to lose the war because they didn't send up their offensive strategy. Their oil was cut off, so they're trying to, quote, gas by coal. They didn't have enough even pain meds, so they were making methadone uh, so they could give it to their soldiers suffering of pain and lost their limbs, etc. Uh, and if you're a realist, you'd be planning on how you're going to kind of capitulate and still want to live, for example, in Russia or in America as a scientist or technician or as a politician. And maybe change your identity. Uh, and I think that the, the global trillionaires and billionaires, they know that this scenario that's coming down is going to not just hurt the, the, the ultra poor in the third world, it's not just going to hurt the middle class, it's going to hurt the, 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 the pretty wealthy, and even the mega wealthy are going to suffer greatly. And they don't want it. They don't want to lose their islands, their private airstream jet, they don't want to lose their their the private golf courses membership in yachts. Right. They don't have a toxic world where you can't even reproduce because you get birth defects and then your life is cut off. And they know that from their friends that are powerful, like I teach in the Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine, I'm doing a keynote lecture this December 11th on mitochondrial function and life extension. And we've got so many new technologies that are literally on the cusp to not just extend human lifespan like we have now. Like I have a, a, a medical tourism that's going to launch in probably within a month. 
in Cancun. We have a top hematologist in a hospital lab. That you can send your blood anywhere in the world to this facility, and they'll multiply your stem cells that are pair matched to your blood, to your own stem cells, multiply them, or you can get umbilical cord ones or tissue type to your exact tissue type, your blood types, etc., and multiply billions of times and even store your own stem cells for decades. That okay. Um, well, technologies for life extension are there, but we're on this cusp of being we're going to go down to this horrible world where even the billionaires are going to lose everything and have their life cut short and die in some horrible death. Or we're going to have life extension, you know, a, a population of Earth that will stabilize. I mean, once people get advanced civilizations like Japan, your population doesn't explode, it contracts. Right. Uh, you don't continue to populate like crazy. But, and then, okay, but there is, a, basically, there is a wave headed towards us. And, and you've heard of, about this thing called space fluff, I assume. Are you talking about the uh, the the the, you're talking about the 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 vortex wave that's heading toward us, the planet, as we cross through the uh, the midpoint of the galactic plane? Is that what you're referring to? Uh, well, no, I believe that the that scientists detected uh, w w there's a whistleblower from a Boeing whistleblower, I think it is, uh, who okay. talked about uh, a, 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 what he called space fluff, which is like a um, a sort of body of uh, I don't know electrons or something. That are out be beyond our just beyond our the edge of our solar system. Uh, that oh yeah, okay. It's just like a force field that we've encountered, and um, and actually they don't know anything about it other than it's probably headed our way. What do they expect it to hit here? Uh, well, that I don't know. But yeah, those, those, we're in what's called the debris field of the galaxy. So encountering high energy particles and electron fields and whatever is part of just where we are. And we pass through it periodically, which is how, in fact, it's caused, I, I like to call it progressive recreation, not evolution. It's, it's progressive intelligent recreation of all the life forms on Earth. That's why you don't see interspecies. It is destroying a lot of species that do exist. It's rechanging the actual structure of the planet, which is why we have mountain forming. And during these rapid changes, you do get relatively sinking of continents, rising of continents. Like you can go to uh, Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs and you can walk around Air Force Academy and you can pick up seashells at 6,000 6, feet. Yes. Yeah. Okay? Uh, so what people need to understand is the world that they think exists is not a stable world. It's a world that goes through progressive and, and, and cyclical catastrophes. There are geomagnetic, magnetic, galactic, cosmic, even things like uh, cosmic uh, background radiation will well, be exposed to when the magnetic field collapses and uh, ultraviolet and x-rays. So, you know, if there was this large CME in the magnetic field, let's say, dropped for three days, if you, not only if you didn't go outside, but if you weren't underneath, say, eight feet of dirt or a foot and a half of concrete, you're probably going to get a pretty good dosage of radiation. I understand. Uh, but there's also, the, this thing is, is, is called an interstellar cloud. Okay. Yeah, um, that doesn't, doesn't surprise me that cloud is probably near the galactic plane as, as our solar system passes through the plane, it's most likely to come in, in contact with that cloud. Okay, but in essence, what the question I'm kind of building towards here is the idea that actually we are changing, our bodies are changing at this very moment, and this is sure. happening around the, the world. The epigenetics of the structure, we're earthlings of our, of you want to call it the the, the, the sacred geometry of the mineral content in our bodies, for example, one of the things I've been working with is Dr. Ken Emmons, one of our top doctors in our board of our Academy of Environmental Medicine. He's a, uh, a specialist in a bunch of different areas, but one of them is what's called electrohomeopathy, where they can actually measure the scalar frequencies of your body to reverse illness. Yes. Your body is basically a hierarchical scalar hologram that codes for how to build you and how your cells function. And the 12 chakras, not just the seven, but there's actually 12 are all keyed on specific minerals. So, for example, I can run over those briefly and people get an idea that mineral for the heart, for example, is magnesium, <clears throat> which is the same mineral for, for chlorophyll, which is the heart chakra. Uh, that one, of course, is the sixth. The twelfth, is, which is the top on the crown chakra, is molybdenum. Uh, <clears throat> it's interesting that uh, depleted uranium hits tromium and molybdenum. Uh, the eleventh is iron. Magnetite in your brain <clears throat> is the thing that you it allows you, the third eye, to see what's called the uh, torsion field. So people that see transdimensionally or intuitively or whatever have higher magnetite in their brains. So if you do scanning electron microscopy, you find people that are psychic. If you do an autopsy, 
they have more magnetite in their brain. Okay. Per and feet. But 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 my point is, and and what you're kind of aiming at is is actually um, very <laughs> accurate in in terms of where where I'm going. Uh, yeah. In other words, if you adjust, if you realize that we are changing in our composition energetically, and that includes the chakras, includes the uh, the metal content. Uh, the, right, the, the mineral content are are literally a holographic structure of what we are as being. Okay, so so all of that is changing, but there's right. there so so there's an idea that there may be a readjustment happening, whether whereas, in some ways, if you will, this <clears throat> this organism called the human, even though there are all these impending sort of doom scenarios, there's a, there's a way that we may actually. Um, encounter them briefly and then overcome them just as quickly as you as you mentioned how uh, it's like going through the birth canal I mean birth, the birth is a pretty traumatic event if you think about it blood screaming uh, pressure all the dangers of delivery but yet without that process you don't have delivery right <laughs> and uh, in fact the very things like the, being the anvil of I call the galactic prana or key in the cosmos when the magnetosphere collapses that anvil and hammer effect of the cosmic, what I call in intentional radiation that has an intentional field that changes the nature of the beings on the planet, does it through the liquid crystal activity on the cell membrane, the membrane that I call M-E-M-B-R-A-I-N. So all these chakras, like indium, for example, is the one in the pineal gland. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> if you look at chromium, it's uh, chromium and uh, uh, thallium and germanium are what are called superconductors. They're in the pituitary and the hypothalamus. So we actually have superconductors, minerals in our body. Mm -hmm. I2, which is uh, the eighth chakra, the thyroid adrenals, that one is the one that Casey talked about, which is, I have an engineer, a former NASA engineer, makes our neutrodyne, which is a, literally the Edgar Casey uh, super iodine that activates your mitochondria and all your sex and stress hormones, your adrenals and thyroid. So each of these minerals is like a frequency and those inner, we're going through an energetic plane of the galaxy that's tuning us up. In other words, it's it's raising not only our quote our physical consciousness, but the consciousness of our DNA, the intentional field, <clears throat> and the nature of other creatures too. For example, after Chernobyl, they thought that most of the mice and creatures would die. When we went back a few years later, what they found is the mice had leaped forward and were called recreated, so they were super mice. They could run faster do all kinds of things, it's like, wow, these are different mice. And they went and checked in the areas that were some distance from it, and they were like the old-style mice. But these new mice were like, wow, these are super mice. Right. So, so, so the things so that we're that going through are actually going to recreate us into a better being, if you want Exactly. Not. And and so <laughs> there is that potential there, and, and in fact, I, I do believe that that that's what's happening out there. Uh, we, like I said, we do need to, to sort of wrap this up. Yeah, so the, we have danger and we have opportunity, just like the ancient Chinese symbol. The danger is we have uh, the danger of gridlock and not moving forward to kind of make positive move. We need to maintain the ability in America to transfer from the Fed Reserve to the Treasury. We should have state banks, so all the governors, like governors of California and all the other states, should move to have state banks. We need to move where we strengthen the world through stronger nation states rather than a global government. And we deal with global issues like pollution, like China shouldn't be polluting with dirty coal. We should assist them in other nations to have energy and technology to prevent ecological disaster, protect against populations, and stop doing things like fracking the, the ground when we take out oil and gas like these shale oil fields that are releasing volatile chemicals that are destroying populations. We talked about this at the academy. So right. we, we can deal with each of these issues with our intellect, with our spirit and our science, not just to help us, but to help people everywhere. Absolutely. But you don't need, quote, a global banking structure where they control austerity and credit and so on in one bank. What you need is you need kind of fixed exchange rates. You don't need to necessarily go to gold and silver. Uh, the idea I like is that you set up the, 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 the unit of currency is the intellectual and physical property of the human mind to create things and build things and make ideas. Absolutely. And that becomes your exchange rate rather than gold or silver, precious metals or ore electronic divots in the central bank that controls austerity and says, no, you can't have health care. you got to retire at 70s here. You get your retirement posthumously. Uh, none of that needs to happen. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Dr. Bill, thank you very much for coming on with me and spending some time here. I, I think that, that we should wrap this up this time. Uh, 
again, you know, I, hopefully we can do it again sometime 